Hi everyone, it's Raina. So this video is for the full moon in Aquarius happening on August 15th at 7.29 a.m. Central Standard Time. So perhaps if you are in the Southern Hemisphere, this may actually be in the early morning of uh, the 16th, possibly. I haven't done the um, conversion, but you know, that time frame. And um, the North American tribes, um, well, they had uh, different names for it, but let me just read what it says in the Farmer's Almanac uh, dot com or on it. <laughs> the fishing tribes of North America are given credit for naming for the naming of August's moon since sturgeon, a large fish of the Great Lakes and other major bodies of water, were most readily caught during this month. So they called it the full sturgeon moon. Uh, a few tribes knew it as the full red moon because as the moon rises, it appears reddish through any sultry haze. It was also called the green corn moon or grain moon. And um, I'm assuming the green corn moon has to do with the corn harvest, perhaps. Um, this year in the Midwest, I live in the state of Illinois, and we had a very rainy uh, June, I believe it was, you know, time goes so quickly. I can't remember like <laughs> if it was June or July, I think it was June and the corn, um, the, the crops were, were actually delayed. So I thought that perhaps we were going to get it later, but I actually went to the far farmer's market last week and was able to buy some corn and they seemed like they had plenty. So I guess, uh, it caught up. So, um, in any case, I thought you'd find that interesting, and um, I'm also looking at the degree of 22 degrees of Aquarius, and 22 is called the Master Builder number. It's a master number, and it's a builder because it, um, I'm assuming, because it uh, reduces to four. You're not supposed to reduce master numbers, but you can look at the vibration by reducing it, and um, so... Basically, you think of a square and it has four sides. So the number four is all about, um, you know, things that are um, made manifest. And so all of those qualities of being responsible and being um, practical are associated with it. But with the um, 22, there is that sense of, it being probably, I would say, at a higher level, not just on the more mundane level of four. So this is also about being a visionary for those things that you're trying to accomplish. And so, you know, and I can tie this to Aquarius because Aquarius rules the 11th house. You know, here's another master number, right? And um, so basically... Um, Aquarius is a humanitarian uh, sign, and so I could see like the number 22 relating to these uh, lofty dreams that we also want to make manifest. It's one thing to have dreams, but to benefit people practically, we have to um, ground them down into tangible uh, manifestations, right? So this is that kind of combination. And um, so the other thing, too, is that I added up this particular date, and it's going to add up to an 8, which is another, which is a, n a very powerful number um, that is dealing with um, material wealth and power, uh, uh, worldly power. And, the, you know, of course wealth equates to power in the world, right? So um, that's very interesting that, uh, that it seems like it's a very good manifestation day. And um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is the fact that, I don't know if I read it on uh, the Farmer's Almanac site one time or what, but I remember reading somewhere that the Aquarius full moon is the best full moon to break an addiction or, you know, some type of bad habit 
And they were saying, because Aquarius is a sign that can suddenly stop something. And this is because the ruling planet Uranus is known for uh, just kind of like very sudden, uh, unexpected, and abrupt types of uh, endings. And uh, if you personally have a moon in Aquarius in your natal chart, um, you may have that kind of emotional um, quality to you where you can be into something and then suddenly just like cut it off. And other people might be a little bit unnerved by that because they can't believe somebody could just, you know, <laughs> close down uh, their emotions towards something so drastically. But it can actually work in your favor because if you think about it, when we have an addiction or, you know, a, a kind of like a compulsive behavior or something like that, it really is that our emotions are engaged and we feel attached to that thing. And so being able to detach from something is, um, it can be challenging. And I think that Aquarius is known for detachment and that suddenness to be able to just like drop something is really a blessing because sometimes, you know, you make a resolution to quit something, but then you keep going back and forth and that can be very draining energetically. So that's going on. And, um, so looking at the actual information about some of the, um, well, you know, what signs are in these personal planets as well as, well, it could be any of the planets that are happening right now and how they're interacting with one another, which is what the um, aspects that the planets are making to one another. Um, obviously, or maybe some of you don't know this, but at the time of a full moon, the sun is at the same degree in the opposite sign. I remember the first time that an astrologer that I was watching on YouTube said that and and I was like, wow, you know, I never even, you know, thought about it that way. So at the time that the moon is at 22 degrees of Aquarius, the sun is at 22 degrees of Leo. Now we are in Leo season because this is August 15th. So the sun, yes, is in the third decanate of uh, Leo, uh, the third, um, 10 degree, um, what would you call it? Uh, category or, <laughs> uh, and, um, so it just so happens that Mercury is in Leo as well. And, uh, Mercury is going to be at four degrees. Now we did just come out of, um, Mercury retrograde. So Mercury is catching up. Um, it was at, I believe it was at that four degree mark when it, when it retrograded. So I guess it's, I, I don't have my ephemeris in front of me, but I guess it's staying at that four degree mark for a few days. Um, and, uh, and now at this time of the full moon, we've just come out of, uh, Mercury coming out of its shadow and also, um, Jupiter turning direct, both on the same day, on August 11th. So I think that this is um, a time where there is forward movement. And here at the, the full moon in Aquarius, rather than being an ending of sorts, I think it's a, more of a, what I, I would call it like a blossoming or opening up or like, you know, swelling in size where uh, it's, it's like an early harvest perhaps because um, 
there's a lot of Leo energy. Mercury is in Leo. We have the sun, of course. We have Venus, which um, is actually, oh my goodness, Venus is an exact conjunction with the sun, 22. So that could be a great manifestation too, because uh, Venus is not only the goddess of love and beauty, but also rules that second house of money. So um, perhaps that can be like financially advantageous. And Mars is at 28 degrees of Leo. So we have all this fire energy and then that moon in Aquarius. So looking at the aspects, um, the sun is in conjunction with Venus. So this is great for romance, but also for um, utilizing your creative talents to make money. And, um, and if you are somebody who has already um, been, you know, if you've launched a business, perhaps, and you're waiting to see a profit, maybe this will be the time. Um, by the way, if you are a Sagittarius or a Pisces, and you have um, Jupiter as a ruler, Pisces is an ancient ruler, you may find that, and, and um, I could say sun and rising sign, um, you may find that you're um, becoming more uh, fortunate um, as the days go on in August. And this could feel like a reversal of fortune, well, in a good way. Um, not that, you know, I don't know how many um, of you guys have felt any kind of a slowing down uh, of anything, but um, I think that there's a lot to be optimistic for, let's put it that way. And um, of course, Jupiter is in Sagittarius, so that's fire energy, okay? So we have a lot of fire. Fire energy is positive. And what I mean by positive, um, the masculine signs, uh, which are fire signs and air signs are called positive signs. But when we talk about positivity in the, the sense that most people uh, think of it, it's really um, looking at the bright side of things, seeing the glass half full, and um, believing that even if you are down, you're not out, that there are good times around the corner. And if you think about it, you know, you might be thinking when you hear me say that, well, doesn't everybody, you know, shouldn't everybody think like that? Well, I mean, there are different types of uh, personalities, emotional makeups, <laughs> if you will. Uh, we all have uh, different ways of perceiving things. And people who are more what I would call reserved in this regard, who uh, might be even considered cynical or skeptical, they don't want to get uh, carried away. They want to be more realistic. And there's definitely um, something to be said for that. So uh, being balanced, of course, is the ideal. But I feel like all of us could benefit from this fire energy and feeling joy, feeling enthusiastic because um, especially if you believe in the law of attraction, at least the gen general theory of it, um, like attracts like. And if you are in high vibes, positive feelings, you will likely attract more of the same. So why not? And I should have guessed it looking at a Mercury, which is how... We think it's our mindset. We have Mercury trining, easy flowing aspect, Jupiter. And so um, it's a pretty wide orb, 10 degrees, but what the heck? I mean, according to this, it's close enough. So um, it, I really don't care about degrees myself. I just care about what the two um, signs are. So Mercury's in an early degree of Leo, 
and then we have uh, Jupiter and Sagittarius. So it's about dreaming big. And I also want to, you know, mention that with Mercury and Leo, it's about thinking of yourself uh, with self-respect and and knowing that you deserve self to, to treat yourself with respect. And this is when you are dreaming about what you want to attract. Sometimes I do feel that people who kind of roll their eyes at something like that, they don't really believe that they're deserving of these things. And so for them, it's like uh, pie in the sky because they just can't see themselves attracting um, a lot of good to them. And um, so to me, self-respect means that you believe that you're just as deserving as anyone else of um, abundance. And a lot of times you will hear that fire signs are considered uh, very generous. And this is that abundant attitude where it's like there's more where that came from. So I don't have to fear giving money away or giving uh, material goods away because I'm going to be replenished. And so, um, you know, this is all really good stuff. And let me see. Um, yeah, and so there's like all these trines to Jupiter. Oh, I'm so pumped for this. The sun is trining Jupiter. Um, this is great for um, just your sense of potential, you know, aspirational self, what you aspire to become. You know, wherever we are right now, and especially if you feel like, oh, gosh, you know, how can I possibly achieve this or that if you are like stuck in you know this moment and you don't feel like it's going to be that easy to get to uh one of your goals um i think that this can boost your morale because uh it boosts your vision uh with mercury trying jupiter makes you think bigger um Venus is trining Jupiter. This is great for material gain as well. Both of these planets are connected to material gain. Also, you know, Jupiter is considered the planet of luck. So if you want to look at luck as, you know, this random grace of God or the universe, or if you believe that you are aligning with something, that you are actually doing it based on your action, However you want to view luck, I mean, this is awesome. Let's see anything that might be challenging. The moon is um, opposing Venus. So for people in relationships, there may be this sense of like not knowing um, how to emotionally... Um, you know, moderate oneself. And I, I see this with people in their um, natal charts when they have this opposition. They tend to kind of like have a hard time um, knowing how to rein it in or how to give it out, you know. And um, it, an opposition means that there are two extremes happening. And with the moon and Venus, we're talking about, you know, displays of affection and how you um you love are you loving excessively um are you you know are you being too codependent in your relationships and actually with the sun and moon opposing one another at every full moon this is kind of like heightening the emotions in relationships and then there's um, the moon opposing Mars. So um, that kind of uh, seesaw effect of, um, again, you know, the moon in this detached sign of Aquarius and Mars in this fiery, um, passionate, proud Leo. And... Um, 
some of these uh, stubborn attitudes, you know, this is a lot of fixed energy. And what can happen when you have um, so much fixed energy here is that in these personal points um, is that there's like um, no room uh, for compromise. Everybody is like set in their ways. And so this can be a time when we have to look at rigidity in our life, whether it's happening with ourselves. Again, going back to that, you know, discussion about addictions and things that we need to let go of. If we just cling to the, the idea that we need something in our life that we really don't, um, that keeps us stuck and, uh, we're trying to break free. So there can be this, um, stubbornness, but like I said, I think it, there's going to be a lot of positivity happening with Leo. Leo is like a big kid. So it's like playful. It's the inner child coming out. And, um, I was even looking at, um, you know, uh, there is, you know, Jupiter is squaring Neptune. So that's very, um, over the top when it comes to, you know, uh, being positive about things, but maybe to the point where it's unrealistic. But um, what I was going to say is that there is a trine between Neptune and the North Node. And I feel like people are starting to really feel a sense of their life being their own and wanting to do work, for instance, that really reflects who they are at a core level. And this is kind of like, instead of um, looking at life from a first, first chakra perspective of just being in survival mode and try and saying, oh my God, I have to make ends meet. Uh, but saying, I have to um, feel joy. And that's kind of like what Leo, you know, Leo rules the fifth house. And the fifth house can be your childhood. Um, the fourth house uh, is your, you know, your family of origin and your past. And the childhood is, is part of that too. Uh, the fourth and fifth houses can reflect childhood. But the fifth house is that inner child. And, you know, if your inner child has been extinguished or kind of suppressed, I would say, because, you know, even, you know, when you were young, if you had to grow up fast for some reason, then it's time to embrace that inner child, let it come out to play. And, you know, not only with creativity, but with, you know, following your bliss. So um, I'm going to leave it there. And I hope that um, all of you have an awesome full moon in Aquarius. Take care. Bye.